I'm not ashamed. What was the penalty for rape under the law of Moses? This is a question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Deuteronomy on walking through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 22. We're going to be reading from verses 23 to 30. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Deuteronomy 22, beginning of verse 23. If a young woman who is a virgin to be, is betrothed to a husband and a man finds her in the city and lies with her, then you shall bring them both out to the gate of that city and you shall stone them to death with stones. The young woman, because she did not cry out in the city, and the man, because he humbled his neighbor's wife, so you shall put away the evil from among you. But if a man finds a betrothed young woman in the countryside, and the man forces her and lies with her, then only the man who lay with her shall die. But you shall do nothing to the young woman. There is in the young woman no sin deserving of death. For just as when a man rises against his neighbor and kills him, even so is this matter. For he found her in the countryside, and the betrothed young woman cried out, but there was no one to save her. If a man finds a young woman who is a virgin, who is not betrothed, and he seizes her and lies with her, and they are found out, then the man who lay with her shall give to the young woman's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he has humbled her. He shall not be permitted to diver divorce her all his days. A man shall not take his father's wife, nor uncover his father's bed. In our last lesson, we began looking at some of the morality laws concerning marriage outlined here in Deuteronomy. We noted that when someone was betrothed in Israel, they were considered married, even though the home-taking ceremony had not yet been performed and sexual relations had not yet taken place. That means that the only way to end betrothal was through divorce. It also meant, though, that if you had sexual relations with another man, that would be adultery and you would be subject to stoning. If on the wedding night it was discovered that the woman was not a virgin, then the husband could make a public spectacle of her and have her stoned for playing the harlot. If, however, he lied, he had to pay 100 shekels of silver to the bride's father as a consequence for bringing a bad name on a virgin in Israel, and he could never divorce his wife for as long as he lived. Coming out of verse 23, we come to a rather sensitive topic, the topic of rape. Like we said in the last lesson, parents who listen to this podcast with children might want to assess their children's maturity level when listening to this lesson, though we will be dealing with the topic delicately enough that good lessons will be available for people of all ages. Rape occurs when a person has non-consensual sexual relations with another and is always wrong for someone to perpetrate. Under the law of Moses here in Deuteronomy 22, rape could occur as an offense against someone who is betrothed or married and someone who is not betrothed, unmarried. The penalty for rape would depend on which type of woman was raped and where the rape to actually took place. If someone who was betrothed had sexual relations with another man, then what she had done was committed adultery. Both her and the man were to be stoned to death for their sin. However, a woman who was betrothed could be raped, and even though she engaged in a sexual act, since she did not do so willingly, she would not be convicted of adultery. Only her rapist would be put to death because of what he did to her. How could a charge of rape be considered under the law? Well, it depended on where the rape took place. If the rape took place in a city or a village, the betrothed woman would naturally cry out for help. This cry would have been heard by others because houses were in close proximity to one another and would be evidence that she was not consenting to having sex. If, however, she didn't cry out in the city, it would be presumed that she was consenting and therefore would be guilty of adultery. If the rape took place in the field, though, the betrothed woman may have cried out and nobody heard. Thus, because of this, it was going to be presumed that the woman did cry out, meaning that only the rapist would be put to death. Couldn't that mean that a woman could lie and an innocent man be put to death? Theoretically, yes, but lying witnesses were punished harshly under the law of Moses, so that was designed to provide a deterrent against making false claims against someone, as the penalty for lying in this case would have been death for the woman, 
since that was the penalty she sought against the man. Now you might ask, why was the penalty for rape of a betrothed woman death? It had to do with the fact that in having sex with another man's wife, you're stealing that which belonged to him. We don't like to think of marriage in terms of belonging to one another, but the scriptures refer to, to it in that way. A man belongs to his wife and a woman belongs to her husband. It is an equal relationship in that regard. For someone else to go in and forcibly take that which was not theirs and defile it to serve the, the highest of penalties, death in this case. Understanding this point will help make clear why the penalty for the rape of a woman who is not betrothed is different. In verses 28 and 29, we find that if a man rapes a woman who is not betrothed, his penalty is not death, for he did not commit adultery. The penalty was that he had to pay 50 shekels of silver to the father of the woman in order that he may marry her. Furthermore, he was not allowed to divorce her under any circumstance. This passage has been a stumbling block to many people today, wondering why God forced a woman to marry her rapist. This is the problem of not having a full understanding of the Old Testament law. While not married in this culture, a woman would be living at home and would be under her father's authority. Her father thus had the right to make most decisions for her. A situation similar to this is discussed in Exodus 22, verses 16 and 17, which says, If a man entices a virgin who is not betrothed and lies with her, he shall surely pay the bride price for her to be his wife. If her father utterly refuses to give her to him, he shall pay money according to the bride price of virgins. What we have in Exodus 22 is not rape, rather it is fornication. Note, however, in that passage that the father had the right to refuse to allow his daughter to marry the one she had committed fornication with. Now, the fornicating man still had to pay the price uh, to the father for his deed, for now it was likely that the bride price paid should a man desire his daughter was lower, since she wasn't a virgin. Bring that principle to Deuteronomy 22, and it could be easily deduced that the father would have the same choice here. The fine would need to be paid regardless, but the woman would not be forced to marry her rapist. If her father consulted with her and she wanted to marry the man, then such a union could be allowed, though the father may still overrule his daughter. The union, though, was not forced. Now, in today's world, the woman would have the sole choice because of how our society has shifted from a family-based society to an individualistic society. But we must be careful not to pass judgment on another culture, for the type of culture that existed in the times of Moses was not sinful, it was just different. Our passage ends by telling Israel that a man was not to take his father's wife, nor defile his father's bed, meaning a man was not to sleep with his stepmother, like Reuben did, nor marry his stepmother either. We covered this already in our study of Leviticus 18, verses 6 to 8. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 1 to 8, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.